Guys, I get asked all the time about going down to fish in the swamp. What do I need to take? I put together my favorites, the stuff that I'm going to go to the swamp with every time. Uh, now, I am not a swamp pro, but I have learned a lot of what not to do and what to do. So I'm just going to kind of pass on my knowledge for y'all. The number one thing that I would say do not go to the swamp without would be some sort of a red shad worm. Um, this is these are, are the zooms and I use these. I just picked up these. This is another, this is their trick worms. The thing with the worms, it doesn't matter. You can use the front half, the back half, the middle third. As long as it is a red worm, it will work. Um, uh, these, I, I, I can't explain it other than the fact that I would rather go down there and swim with a pork chop PFD through all the gators in the swamp without going to fish without some sort of red worm. That's how important this is. So just remember, bees now you can fish them on a jig head i use a uh, uh usually a one eighth ounce or up to a quarter no bigger than that and work them that away jig them vertically in in the pads but trust me you want to have a red worm do not go to the swamp without that uh number two and it's not not in any particular order uh i will rig the i like a trd cross just because they're tough they last really long and, and I, I will fish these on a Ned Rig head. And the thing I like about the little bitty craws is that literally everything will eat them. Uh, the, the Warmouth, the Bowfin, the Jacks, you name it, everything, even the catfish down there will eat these TRD craws. They last forever. Uh, they're easy to fish and I, I fish them all over the place. If, if I'm not throwing a craw, I'm throwing a regular TRD. And, and I like this blue craw with that orange in it. Uh, this is called Bubble Gut and it's got a little pink to it. And then this this green pumpkin orange oranges yellows reds that's the color spectrum that you want to stay in in the swamp that everything eats orange yellow and red even on the spinner baits which is another thing that i will carry now these are smaller spinner baits i'll fish up to a 3 8 ounce spinner bait but but i really like these little booyah reds uh, or the small strike kings uh, i will fish a bigger one uh, in a white with with a, a and, and drag it closer to the bottom i like that a whole lot but these are my go-to's right here so just remember to carry some sort of a spinner on and, and even in a spinner uh an inline spinner and you see my color spectrums here they're all bright uh and i like these little vibrax they work very well but but having some sort of an inline spinner you see all it's reds and yellows that's what you want to have another thing that i do if the weather's warm enough and there's any top water action going on a black and blue buzz bait. Now I love throwing a black and blue down there. The thing you want to do is watch behind this bait when you're reeling it in because 99% of the fish will track it before they hit it. So when you see a secondary weight come up behind it, track it, slow this down to where it's just sagging in the surface. And when it starts that sag is when he's gonna hit it. But just make sure that you keep your eyes watching behind it. Same thing with a frog. Now I don't like throwing a frog that much down there because I tend to miss most of the fish. You'll miss a lot of the fish with any soft plastic you throw. The buzz bait, if they hit it, most of the time you've got them. So I would much rather throw the buzz bait than the frog, but that's if, if the weeds are where I can't throw this, I'll throw a frog just to get by. But honestly, if you had one thing, like I said, some sort of red worm, this is what you want. This will get it done. Hope this helps. Y'all take it easy.